It's a cheese board. So I started off with a three and a half inch board that is about 47 and a half inches long. I marked out about half of an inch on each side and rip saw on both sides at the same time. This time I actually did a pretty good job at rip sawing. Everything went fairly straight. I jointed the piece that was left over and cut one more piece to fill out my width requirement. Then I cut all the pieces to length for the panel. Once I had all those, I lined them up how I wanted them and marked them so I didn't lose what place they were in. And I folded each of the pairs together to joint each edge. And I glued them all up. This, is, this looks like a lot of glue, but I had very little squeeze out, so I was pretty pleased with that. And I used a lot of clamps. Now I know you might say these are massive clamps, but they're what I bought when I knew I was moving over. I wanted to make sure I had enough big clamps. And once it was dry, I planed the surfaces smooth, joined at the edges square, and cleaned up the bottom. You can see that uh, beautiful refraction coming from planed wood. I then pulled out my Stanley 45 and what I'm using it for is to make the groove for the tongue and, end, tongue and groove ends. I then slowly used my router plane to form the tongue on each end of the panel. I tested and I'd keep going until it fit and fit perfectly. And I went real slow with this. I needed to get the tongue to depth, so I cleaned that up. And I used a number five hand plane and a number four hand plane to get the end pieces to the right depth on the top side to match up with the panel. And I glued and clamped it all up. After it was dry, I then cleaned up those edges to make sure they were very flush. And then I cut off all the horns, I think they're called horns, and planed those smooth. And then I put a bevel on top. I put a small bevel on the bottom as well, but nothing big. This is 220 grit sandpaper that I went over everything. You don't need to go with anything rougher when you do all your finishing with a hand plane. And I put multiple coats of shellac on it. Sanded in between coats and then I finished up with the French polishing-ish ish technique that I did last week. I do need to get the boil and seed oil to do this properly. And I used the shavings from it to burnish the heck out of the uh, last couple of coats of shellac. Things I would change on this. I don't know, I really actually kind of like it. It turned out pretty well. Even the wife said it turned out pretty well. I do need to get boiled linseed oil today, so the next time I try the French polishing technique I've been doing, um, it comes out even better. This was also originally going to fit into that tray that I made last week, but I ended up planing it a little bit smaller than what I needed, but that's okay. Um, it sits right next to it. It looks actually pretty good. I would have liked to have put some carvings on there, but uh, this really was a practice in accuracy. So these lines, I'm actually really pleased with how straight and clean they are, the joints on those. I do need to try a little harder on my tongue and grooves to get them a little cleaner. This one's 
almost perfect. This one has a gap in it. The other ones have gaps in them. But uh, I mean, that's why you do these things. You it's practice and you get better every time, right? Hopefully. <laughs> or you screw up royally and learn. If you do like simple projects like this, please check out my previous videos. Please subscribe so you don't miss ones coming up. And give me a like for some motivation and leave some comments so we can get a conversation started. Also, I do have a blog of most everything I'm working on over at cleanfillwanted.com. It is at cleanfillwanted on Facebook. I hope you guys have a good week. I hope you get out to your garages and make something even simple like this because quite frankly, it's pretty fun. Um, hope you have a good week. Bye-bye.